welcome to the panel on collaboration in comics. Uh, I'm your host or moderator, Ashley Lewis. Um, I call myself a writer. I do a podcast called SB Hunter, which is available on all your podcasting websites. And today we have two panelists with us right now, one who we're hoping is going to show up in a little, but we have Seth Yu and Barbara Thomas. Barbara Thomas. Um, so in this panel, we're going to be discussing the very, very, very tangible um, workings that go into comics. As we all know, comics are very unique and that they're a very, um, they're a combination of art and written word. Right, you're not just getting a thousand words with a picture, you're getting a thousand words plus the words on the page as well. So, um, I don't know about everyone else, but for me, group projects are the worst. <laughs> I'd rather just do everything by myself. But with comics, in most cases, you need more than one person to accomplish this goal. Um, and if you guys want to introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about your body of work. Okay, so I'm Barbara Thomas, and I'm the comic writer in conjunction with my husband, Timothy Wall, who is the comic book writer for our series, which is a graphic memoir series on raising our son who's mixed race in Cambridge. It is called Cambridge Chronicled, and it's a play on the newspaper of Cambridge called the Cambridge Chronicles. We have chronicled all of the things that we've encountered raising our son in a very satirical, uh, ridiculous way. It doesn't come from a place of trauma at all. But we do cover things such as microaggressions, systemic racism, and, and just the weirdness of the, the gluten-free, sugar-free, fun-free things that we've experienced from the age of uh, our son being in junior kindergarten up through high school. And now that he is in college, we are able to name names, <laughs> as we say. So if you pissed us off, you're in the book. And so we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I'm uh, Stephanie Yu, I'm the illustrator for uh, the Katie and Cat Sitter series, um, which is a fiction series for middle grade readers about uh, Katie who is saving money to go to summer school and ends up cat sitting for her neighbor who has 217 cats and also like disappears for most nights when, you know, crimes are happening around the city. It's uh, set in New York, and it has lots of cats with superpowers. <laughs> awesome. Lovely. I like that. I have to give that a read. Uh, so I just want to start it off with maybe if you guys, in your mind, I'm sure you do, but as soon as I ask a question, you'll forget. But name a time when working with, for you, with your artist was the most challenging, and for you, when working with your writer was the most challenging. Sure. Um, well, as I mentioned, my, my artist is my husband, and we've been married for 26 years, so something's working right. But the thing that really is challenging working with him is getting the hair right. Um, because he has this envisionment of what my hair is, and it's like this flowing, beautiful, coily thing that I'm like, you just drew Gina Torres' hair. That's not my hair. Or, you know, <laughs> you've just drawn Radon Chong. It's like, that's not my hair. And so it's always very particular. I mean, I'm, every black woman, their hair is their crown. I'm like, get my hair in the picture. Stop drawing these other women's hair. Why are you looking at their hair? And so, <laughs> I mean, it's a simple, silly thing that's challenging, but it was getting the hair right. Can I add to that? Like, that was actually a big challenge in Katie the Cat Sitter um, for Madeline, who is, I guess, a supporting, supporting protagonist. Protagonist, you, you, you find out more about her history um, later, but uh, it was, I just, I wasn't sure like how to draw her hair, and we ended up actually um, hiring a consultant, <laughs> <laughs> because like, I just don't know my way around this, and I also want to like, I want to, I want to get it right. I know that this is a fiction book, and it's like, mm -hmm. cats that use welders, so mm. believability is like, okay, <laughs> but like, I, as an artist, I, I understand. Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely. It's a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Greg? Yes. Our last panelist, thanks for coming. We were hoping to get our fingers crossed. We were like, I'm so sorry. Did he get lost? Did he kidnap him? I was stuck at the table. Like, uh, was I was like, oh, oh yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, if you could just give a brief introduction of yourself and your work. Sure. Uh, my name is Greg Anderson LSA. I've met a couple of you guys downstairs. Um, I'm the writer and creator who's not on the worst writer. I'm going to rush over here. I forgot to bring my books. I apologize. 
But um, my stories tend to focus a lot of like black mythology, trying to showcase uh, various aspects of black culture. And I collaborate with various artists throughout the, the series. And it's one of my favorite things is messing around with different types of art styles. So, yeah. uh, so what we were just doing was having them recount what what one of the most challenging moments that you had with a writer or an artist, even though I mean, you're the artist and the writer for your series, but I mean, you can have issues with these episodes. <laughs> 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 the procrastination is everyone's best friend. So let me see, uh, one sort of recent one um, is uh, one of the artists that I work with with a book called Malasa, which is like this crazy, fantastical, like we're creating things that make no sense in the series. And he does a wonderful job with that. And so we started working on another book where it's more like subdued, it's more like, uh, not realistic, but it, it's not as crazy and fantastical. But it seems like for some reason, when I write like descriptions that are very simple to me, he turns it into like a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, this is not what I wrote. And I don't know if it's like a language barrier, because he's, he's not American, he's from overseas. Um, and there were times where me and my publisher were like, maybe it's a language thing, but I'm like, have you not read the other book we did where we have all this stuff that doesn't make any sense? But now it's just like trying to figure out um, ways of, it's trying to simplify, I guess, some of my, my writing. Uh, that way there's like no, you know, no mistakes or any like confusion rather, because it's like the pages that he was sending look amazing, but then it's like, it's not what I wrote, so it, it gets, very uh, tangled up when you're trying to tell a particular story, a particular scene, and it's not working because this panel all of a sudden is in this page and you're getting all these like cross things. It's, it's very weird, but at the same time, it makes it a lot of fun because it's like, you don't know what the heck you're gonna get. And yet there's been times where he may not have drawn what I wanted, but then I'm like, I might wanna use this for something else later like, on. You know, so uh, there's always like ups and downs when it comes to collaborating. So one of the key points in this, the whole topic of this panel is communication. So you said you have a, a publisher and do you directly communicate with your artists? How did you find them? Why did you decide to get someone who's outside of America versus um, an artist in America to collaborate with? And I know you said you do multiple ones. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, for my main series, it's not a, um, I have like various artists throughout, as I mentioned before. With um, this particular one, this one is work for hire. So I was hired to flesh out this character that they have for a company. And with that particular artist, I worked with him on another book uh, from another company. And because I had a great time working with him, I was like, when um, that publisher was looking for an artist, I was like, I know a perfect person. And he jumped in and he just blew us away with the first issue, you know? And so um, I know with a lot of uh, publishers, they tend to try to go overseas because some of the, uh, the prices are it's cheaper, you know, like the cost of living is a lot uh, less. So a lot of the artists don't mind having their prices a little bit lower. So I know that's why a lot of publishers tend to go for them. Of course, there's some artists that get hip on that. They're like, oh, Okay. <laughs> and so they'll, they'll put it up even though that wasn't the initial price, you know. And so um, it's really, I guess, for most publishers and writers, it's a whole like, what can I afford type of thing as to why they go overseas. Mm -hmm. So it uh, And Barbara, I mean, you, you got lucky, you know, your, your husband's an artist, but uh, tell us about communicating with your husband as your husband versus as the artist who's drawing your comic because it's a very sure. different type of communication, I'm sure. We do try to keep the two separate. And for instance, when um, we're working on the art, what I do as the writer, I have this huge Stradmore sketchbook with the yellow top that you can get from like, you know, any art supply store. And I don't actually sketch in it. What I do is I will go on the internet or I'll just look at pictures of our life and I will put collage pictures around. So I storyboard with pictures and I'll write the text. And sometimes I'll go to Shutterstock to try to capture a facial expression of like, you know, um, you know, an, an annoyed white liberal down talking a black person, you know, like I'm trying to look for that kind of a picture and I'll capture that and I'll 
So I'll have like these huge pages of storyboard with other people, just photos and some stick figures of mine and I'll jot and then I just kind of throw it over the cubicle wall as it were to my husband and he will go, honey, I don't understand what any of this is. And then I'll be like, draw us like Iman and, and David Bowie. Draw us like Iman and David Bowie. That, right there, right there. That picture, that picture, capture that. And so that's our storyboarding. We don't really do the Marvel way or like the Alan Moore way where, you know, you write the sketch, pound, two page spread, light coming from here. So I'm like, I want us holding hands, paparazzi style, just like Iman and, and David. And he's like, okay, I got that. And so, and then I'll, I'll take pictures of us and like put them up. It almost looks like I'm a stalker <laughs> writing like a hostage, like I cut out all these things. And, and then he, he gets it because that's how my mind works. And he's just like, oh, I know exactly who you want me to draw and what you, so we have this kind of mm-hmm because we've been married for 20 some odd years. And we can put that down because we have other interests together. We play video games. So it's like, okay, it's time to play, you know, some old Sega game because we have these old games like, you know, Toe Jam and Earl. So like, we're, we're gonna go play that. And uh, other times it's like, oh, it's your turn to cook. So we do have a lot of things compartmentalized and we have been a husband and wife team before we were an artist team. So this is just another baby that we're raising because our son is grown and we did okay with that. He's in college and uh, you know, this, this, is, this is us, you know, um, talking about the good old days, reminiscing when he was five because now he's 22 and can't stand some of the things we talk about and um, Stop talking about when I was in kindergarten. Stop talking about when I was in eighth grade. Stop talking about when I needed deodorant. Stop talking about, you know, those kind of things. So um, we compartmentalize these things and this is like our second child. And so we, we, we do can keep them separate. We put it to bed and then we'll, we'll go do something else, go for a walk, you know, we'll, you know, I don't know, garden or, or do whatever. So we, we have this very different way of working than, than you may have working or you have working. And then there's this, level of unsaid trust and we spend a lot of time um, like kind of pretending we're like the, the famous married couples who do things like um, Wendy and Richard Peeney who did ElfQuest and they're still married yeah. and and uh, Stan and Jan Bernstein uh, who did the Bernstein Bears. In fact, Jan reached out to me at one point because I was like, we're a husband and wife team. And, and when she was alive, she sent this love, this, she was just like, just do it. Just trust in each other and go get, just go get a attitude. And then there's Wendy and Brian Froud who did Dark Crystal. So we just kind of like go, those are our spirit animals. And we're just, they don't talk much about their process. They're not Ike and Tina Turnering or, you know, Ash, Ashford and Simpson. If you, you know those references they're just loving each other and, lo and supporting each other and just doing it and, and making mistakes along the way just like raising a kid along the way that's all that's all really I can say it sounds corny <laughs> speaking on the trust factor so when I know you're saying you have five books now mm -hmm. uh, so from the first book to now as far as him as an artist when you did your first book where you're like well I don't really like I mean we talked about the hair you didn't mm -hmm. like how you do your hair mm -hmm. but where you're like well I don't like how like your style is so simple. I want a little more detailed. Or and you know, was he a little offended and said, Well, my art is my art and this is how I do it. When we finished the first book, we both thought, oh, we got the system down. We can just churn these out. And we did not have the system down. And furthermore, we work with a graphic uh, memoir collective. So there are four other people who do a Grub Street process with us. The Grub Street process is very much like okay, you're, you step away, we're gonna research it, we're gonna reference your book, we're gonna spend time on what works, what doesn't work, and then bring you back in, and then we talk about it together. So we have been doing this process with these several other people for four years on all of our graphic memoirs. And the first book, there were a lot of bumps along the way because we had to get used to them, they had to get used to us, and then when that first book was done, we are like, we're gonna do the same thing again but it was a different topic and it was bringing up different memories. And so 
I wanted to write it backwards or inside out and other people were like, you should really focus on, it was the school choice book that we won the award on. And we wanted to just kind of like go, oh, this teacher was awful and this teacher was awful and this is awful and therefore we sent our kid to private school. And they were like, um, you need to talk about the school tracking and you need to let people know more about like that systemic racism. You are in a safe space and it's okay to speak your truth. People want to hear this rather than just like talking trash about teachers. And so we were like, oh, really? And it was the process, it was just a whole new process because we had to like get, it was like being in a throuple, I guess. I don't know. It was like we had these other people like in our relationship telling us what to do. And we're like, oh, no. And then the book was better for it. And so each book having this, this critique group, it was better for it because they were like, the outside entity, because we're like, oh, we love you, and hey, everything you write is lovely, and everything you draw is lovely, and we just need these people, Psh. no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and so, um, so the process changed each time, so, yeah. <laughs> so Stephanie, down to you, our hardest artist. So um, this seems like a big, a hefty load to carry, because you said there are 200 cats, mm -hmm. unique cats, I assume. 217. <laughs> so we prompted with this as, as work coming from it, coming at it from an artist's point of view was, were you given a lot of leeway and you're like, I'm just gonna draw whatever kind of cuts I want or is your writer like, no, this is what I have in my mind. There is actually a spreadsheet five pages long with all 217 cats <laughs> listed alphabetically with their superpower because they all have like a special power. Um, and it's usually, it's not like that super, except that it's a cat piloting a helicopter or whatever. Um, so I do reference it because it has the appearance too, like book one, page such, such, and such. And it's super useful because I know that like some cat is going to like slip through the creds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some of these wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so it has been handy. And the thing is like Colleen, the writer, it's so, it's so interesting to hear about the writing process because I don't really, I've never really delved into that. I don't really know what uh, the Grub, Grub Street process is. <laughs> Um, and it's all very fascinating because I feel like I get this manuscript and I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, this is, and I'm, I'm laughing along because like Colleen and I have a similar sense of like absurd humor and like she is great with like puns and wordplay and that type of thing. So I'm like laughing as I read this manuscript and I don't think about it that much until I actually start to draw it. And by then, like, Colleen is apologizing, like, I'm sorry, I, put, I wrote so many cats in. And I'm like, oh no, I, I love drawing these cats. I am all about drawing animals. Um, but there's like a secret in like the third book that um, I'm going to spill it a little bit. There might be giant robots. And then I realize I really don't like drawing these. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't think about it before because it is such a common thing in comics, especially like superhero or anything that's kind of fantastical. And then I'm like, oh, now I have to design these. Oh, can I go back to drawing cats? <laughs> but yeah, that's it's it's an interesting it's an interesting ride, and it is like it's great to hear that for you like your process is different for every book, and it's like changing every time. And I'm like, yeah, I think even with the second book, some things have changed for me. Like it's it's getting a little a little tighter, a little a little faster. Like I've, I've gotten better with my tools, that type of thing. Um, it's, we have a really good like spread on the panel because Greg does everything, um, but also collaborates. You are just a writer and you're just an artist. And so, oh, oh you're a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're all alone. Um, <laughs> so, when it, um, we already touched on that a little bit earlier with Greg, but when it comes to um, really getting your message across tightly, how hard as writers, for you guys, do you, how hard do you hold on to what you've written? Because like you said, when you get stuff from them, you're like, oh, I really like this. This is not what I asked for, but this, I really like this. I'm gonna try and incorporate it. Like how often do you feel yourself kind of giving in? I don't wanna say giving in, but um, kind of massaging what you actually, in your mind, wanted versus what you're getting and vice versa. And you have a lot more leeway because you know, cats. But have you ever been put on the spot like that where Colleen or I'm, you've done a lot of, I like graphic work as well, artist work for people. Um, when they're like, well, that's not what I want. Give me this. If you don't give me this, we're going to have problems. Anyone jump in first? Do you want to help? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So for the most part, um, I'm very open to seeing what my artist brings into the table. Just as long as pretty much the basics of what I've written down is still intact. Uh, so even though I, I have the whole structure of page, panel, description, dialogue, whatever like that, there, there might be certain pages where I might just give to my audience and just be like, generally this is what I want, have fun, run, uh, run free. Or there are times where sometimes it could be like a background thing I didn't even think about. My artist will do some fancy, crazy stuff. And I'm like, holy oh, crap, that's, that's, that's awesome. So for me, as, as long as they continue with the theme and they bring out visually what I want thematically, I'm totally open to. But when it starts to go a bit too far out of like exactly what I want and the story gets lost, that's when I have to step in and just be like, yo, we need to go back, read the script. <laughs> Please go back to the script. Um, and so it's, at this point, it's like the script is the guideline. Uh, let's try to stick to it as much as possible, but I'm not afraid to allow them to roam free because they see things visually that I may not see things, you know, and one artist might picture a scene or a moment different than this other artist. So it's always fun seeing how they interpret different things, which is why I do like collaborating with different artists because each one gives has a new language that I'm not uh, too familiar with. And so at the same time, like I've had some artists with this not a, try to capture something that a previous artist did before. I'm just like, nah, I hired you for your style for mm -hmm. a reason. So let's, let's go with that. So I'm pretty open once again when it comes to those groups. I actually, I really like hearing that because I think sometimes, because Colleen and I have been uh, working on the second book in the series is our eighth book together. We've known each other for over a decade now, and uh, it's generally, you know, aimed at a younger readership. But like now that I think Colleen knows what I tend to do, knows that like yeah, I'll put some, I'll sneak. There's always something going on in the background. I think sometimes I get a manuscript from her, and like she'll just she'll let me play. Like I, I can tell it's like oh, if you just put that in there for me. That's thanks, thanks. It's like well, we can't. I don't know. <laughs> When, it's, yeah, it's fun. when I'm working with this big Stradmore sketchbook, what I do is I'm pretty sure I know how Tim is going to angle and draw some of the images because we kind of grew up, even though we grew up, he's from the Midwest and I'm from New York City, we kind of had the same like life. It's like we watched the same cartoons. We we like, it, it could have been an arranged marriage. I mean, it's like we're just perfect for each other. So he loved the same things I did, like Crack Magazine and Mad Magazine. And so we love those little things that Sergio would draw in the, in the, in the folds. I don't know if you know about the blow-ins. They're like these little tiny images that are like doodled in the sides of Mad Magazine. And so we incorporate that sort of humor in our book. So when I have written this entire soliloquy, and um, Tim comes in and just kind of like gets rid of 90% of what I've written, but he's drawn the image to show it. I'm like, oh, I'm okay because yeah, we, we both like the same humor, Ren and Stimpy, and like totally, yes, thank you. I, I, you will have dinner tonight. And so like, you know, so it's, it, it is hard to see him just kind of like, just like all my words, but my words tend to be the script, the sketch, the everything. It's it's the whole kitchen sink. It's like, and I want to make sure you get this, and the principal, and the vice principal, the baseball bat, and how Connor was feeling, and then and then and, and, and he's just like, and I'm like, thank you. So because like I'm the type A to his relax. He's like my tribble, you know. He calms me, and so when he draws that after I've written like the hundred words, and and now I only have ten sentences as opposed to a hundred sentences, it's. It's, it's easy because I understand that he's like, Barbara, I know you're just trying to get it all in there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's my job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it. I, and I'm not, you, your sentences are well written and there are no dangling participles and you know, there are no overuse of adverbs, but this is a comic book and we're gonna, I'm drawing the image. And, and, and so it is hard, but there's the trust there. Um, so I don't wanna just, Bangle on into negativity, but I do know that like, you know, there's a conflict in mm -hmm. working with another person just because you know human beings are human beings and mm -hmm. we all have moods and emotions and mm -hmm. all these things. Um, can, it doesn't have to be an exaggerated thing, but have you guys ever come into conflict working on a project with 
an artist or a writer and you were just like, why did I choose to do this? No. Um, but tell us about that part of collaborating with someone, like really kind of like the, the give and take of, of it and how, as you said, you don't have any, you have no expertise in writing and you don't draw as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And so for you, you're like, okay, well I said this and you, for the most part you like when mm -hmm. they draw the things they draw. You're like, oh yeah, that's what is in my mind, this is great. Mm -hmm. um, but you're like, oh, can you do it faster? Why mm -hmm. didn't you mm -hmm. make this curvy instead of angular and mm -hmm. kind of critique them on something that mm -hmm. you have no right to? <laughs> I don't know, I think for me it's just like occasionally it'll just be something like, there's a cat in book two called the cuteness who is a welder. <laughs> and it's, it, the cat is like, it, it's an adorable cat because it's named the cuteness and like it wears the mask like to shield the world from its cuteness. And therefore, you know, it also, it's a welding cat. And occasionally I have issue with Colleen's writing because it will be like, and then the cuteness is up in the sky welding the robot together. I'm like, what the, no, what, no, that's not, I know how to weld and that's, uh, okay, this is, I need to step back and like, this is for fun. This is just relax. It's a fictional world where cats are fighting flying robots. So relax with the welding. <laughs> for, for us, of all things, it was the skin color of the characters because my husband is white, I'm, I'm Guyanese American and our son's mixed. And so we kept struggling, fighting with the skin color because he's like, I'm not drawing myself pale, gothic pale. So he wanted to give himself some color. And so therefore, so, you know, you see, like my, my family was like, Barbara, you're not that dark. And I'm like, you might understand. It's a representation because we had to move the colors along in, in Procreate, in iPad. And you know, when, when we get picked up by like a mainstream publisher and you know, the colors are all reworked, well, so be it. But I get it. We need to show that Connor is in between us, even though his color should be my color, and Tim should be paler, and I should be like. So that was a serious, it, it, my family is West Indian, and there's colorism in West Indies. I'm not, we, we, that's a whole other panel. But um, it's just like, my parents are like, why, is it, why are you so dark on that cover? And I'm like, it's because we need, in betwixt, it's a full color book, and we have like, you know, just a whole, gamut of BIPOC people, we just wanted to get all the colors in there and we wanted to make sure that Barbara stands out, Connor stands out, Tim stands out. But even to this day, I'm just like, damn, you made me look like, you know, Kerry Washington Co. And so, and, and she's beautiful, but I'm like, I'm more like Zoe Saldana maybe color or Vanessa Williams color, you know? Okay. So like, it's, it's, that was the conflict and we just had to get over it and get the cover out there and show that it's a mixed race couple. I mean, I've been pretty fortunate with my, most of the artists that I've worked with. I'd say, if anything, it's more so um, maybe like editorial, publisher type of things. Uh, there's definitely one in particular I butt heads with, uh, which made the process very difficult. Let's spill the tea, tell us all about it. I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's that most that I can say oh. that I've been trying to squash through ah, okay. in order to, to continue to publish the book for the fans, mm -hmm. like the supporters. So is it more kind of like from that same position where they're they're not a writer or artist, but they feel like this change should be made and you're like, who are you and who wants your opinion? That's it, it more so it, it becomes a rights issue. Oh. It's more so of, of um, contracts and not honoring certain things and then trying to undermine certain people and which becomes a common thing in the comic community actually um, a lot of people try not to talk about it uh, but there's from like Marvel DC all the way down to small press there's always something where like there's some people feeling like they're being taken advantage of in terms of rights and issues and getting their books out payment like there's always something and so this is just I guess one particular publisher where there was a lot of butting heads with, with things like that. And unfortunately, because of that, that would ruin production of certain books that we had going on, which had so many fans and supporters. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, an aspect I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. Like there is that whole dynamic of artist versus writer, but then there's also 
publisher and editor versus the creative team. And that's that's a whole other piece of animal. Yeah, unfortunately, that, I'm sure that would be an amazing panel because like, a lot of people think that, you know, not that this is easy, but they're like, well, you guys are here, you have your books, obviously. It, it's, you know, it's just not real to them, right? The whole process of being a writer, being an artist, and going through this process of editing and talking to each other and coming out with this final product and putting it to people. So that would be a great conversation to have. Even the conversation we're having right now, because a lot of people just think, you know, you go out, you find an artist, you find a writer, you produce something. But there are a lot of steps that are in between those two points. And collaborating, again, like you said, is not just artists and writers. It, I mean, some of you might self-publish, but um, usually there's also a publisher in the middle there, unfortunately. Um, but I don't I want to, if you guys have anywhere to go, I think maybe. I, I know that there's at least one person in here who has a question. Oh, in the back. Hi. Um, so one thing I'm curious about in, in the process of collaboration is the waiting, the, the, that moment when you've done your thing and then I need to let the other person do their thing and you're just waiting for that to happen and even if you trust them implicitly with all the you know care in the world, they're still that pit in your stomach like, I'm waiting. So just how do you deal with that? How does that affect you? How do you, what do you do in the meantime? What's the, like, what's the emotional reaction to the, it's out there, but it's not out there? I mean, for me, it's like a bit of a mix because um, I, I'm the illustrator for this series, which is 224 pages. And so after I've finished my, the, the big push and I've done like all of these pages, um, I actually hand it off to a colorist. Um, so there's actually, there's quite a team behind this. It's like me and Colleen, uh, artist and writer, uh, but there's also our editor um, and Braden, our colorist, and it, there's a designer. Um, uh, it's it's a, it's really like a little bit of everything. And when I hand it off, it's to Braden, and I'm just like, I, I it's partly relief because again, like I've done the heavy lifting is it's behind me now and now I work on like cover back matter there's plenty of things that keep me busy so I don't like I'm not dwelling on this I can't dwell on it very much but yeah it is a little bit like I hope I hope the colors come out well and <laughs> I I I don't know if that's a very good answer to this <laughs> yeah for us we set two week deadlines because we are a part of this critique group and we turn around stuff every two weeks so um, it's so much easier for me to write. I write quickly and um, I just, you know, toss it to Tim and he has to play with the colors. He has to be the colorist. He has to learn all the cool things and procreate on iPad or decide if he's gonna sketch something out first and use the light box. So I try very hard to have patience. It's really hard because sometimes I'm like, you didn't draw today because I see him every day, <laughs> you didn't draw today. Um, or sometimes he is done and there's one day left and we have to submit to our critique group. And I'm like, these words have to change because of, and, and, and sometimes there's this animosity, like you drew this differently, it's so much more awesome, I have to change my words and now you have to go back and these have to be balloons. And so there's a hurry up and wait aspect to it. But um, we set these two week intervals and they're very short. That, that's why we were able to put out five books in, in the pandemic, because it was just like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about, you know, um, going to the park with our kid. And we're gonna, this week we're gonna focus on how you were treated as the nanny. And then, and then in two weeks we're gonna talk about how everyone thought you were big brother, big sister. So we focus on these really like poignant things. And I, I'm looking over his shoulder because I have that, of a, of, of, you know, it's like, uh, you wanna sleep in this bed tonight? You gonna draw? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, cause you know, it's my husband. Anyway, so like, um, it's, sometimes he'll be in bed just doodling and I like, and that gives me comfort because I'll be snoring next to him and he's like on the iPad with a stylist drawing, drawing me. And so it's, 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 it's just a totally, I, I, like I said, I like to think we're like, you know, the Berniston brothers team, you know, brother, you know, team or, you know, the Dark Crystal team because, you know, we, we see each other every day and we're just like constantly just talking about it over cereal um, when we're not talking about getting your taxes done on time or things like that. But um, 
that that that's that's our process. For me, it's uh, I work through contracts. So after me and the artist, we've agreed on in terms of like payment or all that other stuff. I generally like to ask how many pages do you feel you can get me within a week. Um, so if it's like a 20 page comic or even 100, whatever. Uh, some artists can do three pages, some can do five pages, some are willing to say four or five, but if they can give me more, totally cool. That's totally understandable. And if anything uh, comes along that they can't knock it off, then we'll discuss things, we'll try to fix, but pretty much the contract is just to keep everybody accountable. And so um, that whole waiting aspect doesn't always, um, it doesn't get frustrating. For me because it's like we're, we planned this um, unless there was one particular one one of my books where that artist was just he was dealing with a lot of life stuff so and he was a friend of mine so like i actually knew everything that was going on so it wasn't one of those things where we have a wall because i don't know his life where i was just like you just do come on and he was constantly having technical issues with his stuff his stuff was breaking down so it was just like that it did get frustrating after a while, but after a while, you just learn to let go. It's just like when the book comes, the book comes, you know. Unfortunately for me, I just popped in. I just wonder if you could just, if you guys could just briefly just break down to me what the different teams are. And I'm wondering, is it, don't the publishers, aren't they the ones that are like really? kind of like um, administering the whole thing or you know, overseeing the whole thing and don't they have some meetings with the, you know, the whole team, um, even if they have to do it through Zoom or something? So it's, it's different with uh, every company, for one. So for me, the reason why I have to manage everything is because it's self-published. So uh, um, unless I were to hire an editor to, you know, pick up the slack for me, uh, that would pretty much be its own thing. Then you also have certain publishers, they're the ones who hire the team, they hire the writer, and so they are the micromanagers. They do everything. They make sure everything is on task. Um, that's supposed to be their job, unless there are times where a writer might come along and just ends up, you know, fine-tuning things here and there, and that's that could be due to the fact that a publisher has their fingers on like thousand other books at the same time. Um, but for the most part, yes, the publisher is supposed to be on top of everything as well as the editor, sometimes they're the same person. Um, and then it becomes the writer. After the writer, we have the, the artist, the penciler, inker. Sometimes they're the same, usually the same people. Sometimes they're not. The colorist is right under the artist. And then you have the letterer, the person who puts all the dialogue, the balloons, everything that's in the script. And usually that same letter is in charge of the, uh, the, the press. So like they're doing everything to finalize the final production designs for the printers. And then eventually it prints and it's in your hands and hopefully it's in the bookshelf. Yeah, I don't really understand why, what is the need to have a um, the colorist? I mean, isn't the artist going to um, put in some, they have, they have a vision, don't they have a vision of what, what the colors are going to be? It just, it, it probably depends on, on your publishing house, whether you're self-publishing or uh, whether maybe you're just a two-person team. And then if it is just like artist and writer, yeah, the artist is also the colorist, penciler, inker, letter, all of the above. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the case, like, like. Like um, others have spoken, we, my husband and I are the self-publishers for this. And so he is the, I'm the editor, the writer, the marketer, because in my day job, I can do all of these things. Um, he is the colorist. Um, I am the colorist. Like we, like it, we were talking earlier about like um, the colors that he chose to make all of us in, in the book. And we just had to make a decision based on just the tools that we had and should we do the traditional route and work with the professional colors we know for sure that the colors will change somewhat but for now we are happy with what we've put out with our body of work and um 
when we self-publish, we, we make the decisions. There are no middlemen, there are no, no publisher, no, no people saying you, you have to do this and you have to do that. We, we are our own chef, cook, bottle washer. Our books are distributed through a publishing house, but at the same time, we have to drop ship our books to that publishing house, um, an indie publishing house. And we're, we're very content with it now, um, but as we grow, and it becomes more unwieldy, we will pursue the, the whole mainstream route. And what did they, oh, did you want to? Uh, yeah. No, I, I was just simply gonna add that uh, for the most part, a lot of pencilers, the, the artists, they're not skilled with colors. That's a whole different skill set. There's some who can, and they're like jack of all trades, they're mm -hmm. amazing. And there's some who love to do colors as well. And so they'll ask the publisher, can I also do my own colors? There's some, once they finish drawing, that's it. They don't want to do anything else. That's what they feel they specialize in. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are times where they may know a colorist who reflects the style that they like. Uh, sometimes they're happy to see what a different colorist will bring for their, their artwork. So that is one particular, those are two particular sets of skills that not all of them can embody, but some of them can. Yeah, and that's like really, it's really important to bring up because yeah, you like some people they just want to draw it, and some people just want to do the colors, mm -hmm. and there are also people who like can do can do it all. But uh, like with Katie the cat sitter, um, I also have worked as a colorist. I've, I've worked as a letterer, colorist, pencil, all of the above, the whole chain. <laughs> um, so I can do it, but in order to have this come out in time, like. It's much, it's much easier to have Brady do the colors so that while I'm finishing the inks, I'm already feeding him the pages. Because if I did the colors as well, it's just like, well, enjoy the next book in two years. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, we have a designer at, uh, at Random House who is handling the, the lettering and the actual book design, the jacket and all of that. And it's all mostly so that the books will come out faster. So. Um, our previous designer, actually, uh, for Katie the Cat Sitter, is also someone who can do a lot of things. I've, I've seen her portfolio, it's beautiful. Um, and it's just like, when she's on this project, she works, she does the design. And I think she's doing something cool now that is a, that, that looks like a graphic novel, because there are a lot of artists that can do everything. It's just sometimes maybe you want to specialize, or sometimes it's just a matter of it's a deadline, and you want you want the books to come out. Uh, so I think we have time for one more question, uh, yours, and then uh, we'll have you guys tell them who we are on Artist Alley. And there is uh, the main stage uh, panel that should be starting in like uh, ten minutes. But question, yeah. sorry. So uh, I'll just be quick. So as a writer who tried to do everything and then realized that my art skills were not up to par, and I'm now collaborating. Um, I'm curious, especially for you, Stephanie, as, you know, as an artist working with writers, my, you know, pension is, you know, write everything. You know, this is the panel, this is the angle, this is what the characters are wearing, this is, you know, the colors and everything. Is that helpful, or is it more helpful to be like, you know, this is a crowd in Times Square, go for it. And second part of that same question, actually, I drew my first issue before I realized I couldn't draw, and so I should be like, you know, fit that along with the script to my artist, you know, because this is what I thought it would look like, you know, even though, you know, you make it actually look like what I tried to. Are those kind of things helpful, or is it more a question of, you know, kind of giving you the general idea? And, like, I think it would it. depend on the artist, but, like, I actually find that really helpful because oftentimes when I get the manuscript from Colleen, the first thing I do is, like, really rough layouts, just break down the entire book. And they're all like scribbles, they're like stick people pretty much. Um, but it's just to help me with the pacing. So if the writer has an idea of like how that want, how they want that to look already, then it's actually, as an artist, really cool for me to be able to see that and be like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, I totally understand. Uh, I think Colleen also, she's a writer. She's also a great designer. But when she's writing, like it's it's sometimes it's like stream of stream of thought. It reads almost like that. And by the time I have to illustrate it, it's like, well, you know, you left me about that much room to draw. So <laughs> there's a lot of cutting out and editing. Kind of maybe like kind of like your your you killed my process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And sometimes it is, uh, she, if, if she has a very clear idea of like, well, this panel, I, I really want it to be like a certain angle. Mm -hmm. She might include that in the manuscript. But I also think um, that Colleen and I have worked together for so long. Uh, she kind of has a sense, like there's that trust. Like she has a sense of what I can do, what I like to do. I have a sense of like what her sense of humor is and how to hit that, that piecing. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just depends on uh, who you're collaborating with, what, what that process is like. And I, I'm lucky in that if, if my husband is starting to draw something and really getting into it, I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Before you, get, you have your feelings hurt, the, and then and I'll show him the image, you know, like of like, you know, Imani and the, David Bowie, that picture, that picture. Stop drawing us looking like these two other people from like, you know, Family Circle magazine or whatever, you know, so like, so it's it's nice to stop him before he goes, you know, the, 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 like the, he, the caboose leaves without the horse or whatever the expression is. So it, it's nice to have that immediacy in our work because, you know, we give each other these two week deadlines and sometimes it's even a two hour deadline. I'm like, I saw you pick up that color. That is not the right color. <laughs> and so I do act like a little bit like the colorist or the person, the shader or the, the pacer as well. But, um, you know, this will all change when we go into Main Street, you know, we do another panel next year going, oh my goodness, it's so different. But um, for now, yeah, we, we just kind of like wear each other's hats and I, I draw the stick figures. Um, and then I'm like, you know, I need them doing this. And you know, it's just like, I, I can't draw that as a real fleshed out person. And so um, it's, it's just nice having the writer and the, the, we just live under the same roof and we can just yell at each other. It's the pandemic, we're like working from home and he, it, it's, it's, it's so wonderful just having that immediacy. I'm lucky. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming to the panel. Um, there will be video of this later on the Thomas & Keller YouTube channel, so you can always go back and watch it again from the beginning. Uh, but tell us where you guys are on Artist, Artist Alley so we can check out your books and your artwork and whatnot. Okay, um, I actually don't remember my table number. If the stage is here, I'm like on this side by the bleachers, right in the middle. I'm at table 405. 105 which is like right next to the stage. This is downstairs. Downstairs, yep. Thank you guys so much.